My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. This is episode number 27 of the 120 Days to Jam Chemistry with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at water. Water. Water is a compound made up of hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio 2 ratio 1, which means 2 hydrogen and 1 oxygen. Water is very, very important. Water is so, so important. Water is extremely important. In fact, Thais of Miletus, a philosopher, agreed that the world came from water. Why did he say so? Plants cannot do without water. Humans cannot do without water. Every percent of the universe of the earth is made up of water, which means water is something you cannot do without. We have two types of water. We have the natural water and we have the treated water. Before then, and like I said earlier, water is a compound made up of hydrogen and oxygen. When dry hydrogen is ignited in air, it burns with a pale blue flame to give steam. And when this steam comes in contact with a cold surface, it condenses to form water. So, hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas give you 2H2O. This is the equation for formation of water. And the bond angle between water is 105 degrees. And the shape of water is bent, V-shape or angular. Natural water, as the name implies, is water found in nature. It is not artificial or it has not been tempered with. The sources of natural water are rain water, spring water, river water, sea water, well water, and lake water. Rain water is the purest form of natural water. Take note of that. This is because it is formed as a result of evaporation and condensation. Spring water contains salts, dust, and bacteria. So it contains a considerable amount of mineral salts and other impurities in spring water are dust and bacteria. River water, sea water, and lake water, they contain dissolved air, mineral salts, bacteria, and organic remains. Why? Well water contains clay and mineral salts. These are natural water. How about treated water? Treated water are made for specific purposes. For example, in the lab, you make distilled water, which is a very, very pure form of water for medicine, drugs, and other usages. Now, for town supply, the car water and other water we have around, they are referred to as treated water. This takes us to the treatment of water for town supply, or treatment of water for industries, or treatment of water for supply. Before you supply water for town for consumption, you must follow these steps. These are the steps for treatment of water. 1. Coagulation or flocculation. Before then, many persons will say, I can't see the board clearly. The video is not clear. Like I always say, if you are streaming this on YouTube, by default, YouTube shows you a low quality version depending on your network. So, it is your duty to increase the resolution. This video is up to 1080p and it is crystal clear. Everything on the board is very, very clear. And some of you, instead of streaming, you choose to download. As such, 
you are delivered with very very low quality downloads and you can't even see the board but you can't even see me teaching so you need to fix all that to get the best experience now coagulation of loculation is the use of alum to make tiny impurities clump together the use of alum alums are double salts alums are double salts remember an acid is a substance which when dissolved in water produces hydrogen ions as the only positive ions according to Arrhenius. now when the hydrogen ions present in an acid is partially replaced or totally replaced by a metal salts are formed giving rise to normal salt complex salt acid salt basic salt double salt complex salt so alums are double salts potassium alum or sodium aluminate are used to make tiny impurities of water to clone together that is coagulation or loculation we have sedimentation sedimentation is the process of placing water in a safely tank so that the flux which are the bigger particles in water will come together and settle down that is loculation after loculation you filter infiltration water is passed through a filter to remove the remaining particles the particles which could not be removed via coagulation and sedimentation are removed via filtration after that we move to disinfection or chlorination disinfection or chlorination chlorination is addition of chlorine to water to kill germs now if you add too much chlorine there will be a problem because chlorine is poisonous in high quantity or in large quantity if you are not adding chlorine and you choose to add potassium heptaozodichromate in that process you simply say disinfection because chlorination itself has to do with addition of chlorine the general name is disinfection so you can use chlorine or potassium heptaozodichromate for disinfection it is not poisonous and it is an oxidizing agent iodination is the process of adding iodine to water to prevent goiter swelling so that is iodination iodine helps to prevent goiter and fluorination is the process of adding fluorine to water to prevent tooth decay so that you don't drink water and your teeth <laughs> begin to decay so that is the job of fluorine and there is liming liming is the addition of slaked lime to improve taste and to remove temporary hardness that takes us to hardness in water there are some water as you are using them to wash you notice that they do not lather lather is when you put soap in water you shake it or you put your clothes to wash it's what you expect so that it forms a lot of lather you are able to wash very well but in some cases this water they do not really lather they don't form lather so at such we say this is a hard water and hardness in water can be temporary and it can also be permanent hardness so let's look at the various hardness in water and how to reduce or stop or prevent or cure these hardness the common water pollutants are refuse and sewage oil spillage industrial and agricultural waste these are water pollutants and the physical properties of water are water is supposed to be colorless odorless and tasteless water should have a boiling point of 100 degrees celsius melting of zero degrees celsius water should be neutral to litmus which means it is neither acidic nor basic it should have a ph of seven these are the physical properties of water and chemical properties of water are water reacts with metals yes depending on the position of the metal in the electrochemical series for example water will react with uh, potassium sodium and calcium if water reacts with potassium sodium and calcium it will form alkalis and hydrogen will be given off alkalis are soluble bases water and potassium sodium and calcium can react with cold water because of their position in the electrochemical series now 
Magnesium and zinc cannot react with cold water. They can only react with steam. And when they react with steam, hydrogen is given off. So they form oxide and hydrogen. Meanwhile, potassium, sodium and calcium, they react with water to give us alkalis and hydrogen is also given off. Iron cannot react with cold water, it cannot react with steam. It can only react with excess steam. Excess steam. So iron will react with excess steam to give us oxide and hydrogen is given off. Then, water can react with no metals to either give us hydrogen or to give us acids. And water reacts with oxide to give us alkalis. These are soluble bases. Hardness in water. Hardness in water is caused by the presence of dissolved calcium tetraozosulfate cis, magnesium tetraozosulfate cis, and calcium hydrogen triozocarbonate 4. When you put soap in hard water, this is what happens. The, the soap reacts with water, the salt in water, to form insoluble salt of calcium or magnesium. So forming that insoluble salt, it results in the formation of scum, which makes the water not to lather in soap. And the causes of temporary hardness are this guy, Ca HCO32 and Mg HCO32, which is calcium hydrogen triozocarbonate 4. And the reason it is referred to as temporary hardness is that it can be removed by boiling. So, how do we remove temporary hardness? By boiling or addition of slaked lime. Calcium hydroxide is referred to as slaked lime. And addition of ammonia can remove temporary hardness. So, to remove temporary hardness, either you boil, you add slaked lime, or you add ammonia. For permanent hardness, it is caused by the presence of MgSO4 and CaSO4. These are the causes of permanent hardness. And permanent hardness cannot be removed by boiling. To remove permanent hardness, we either use sodium hydroxide or washing soda, Na2CO3.10H2O. There is a difference between washing soda and soda ash. Soda ash is this form. It does not contain water of crystallization. Meanwhile, washing soda contains water of crystallization. Permanent hardness, apart from sodium hydroxide and washing soda, it can be removed by adding permutite or zeolite. These are ion exchange resins. Although permanent hardness causes wastage of soap, this water doesn't lay that easily, it has its good parts. Permanent hardness tastes better or strong water or hard water tastes better than water that is not hard. Hard water do not dissolve lead pipes, so they can be transported using lead pipes. Hard water helps plants and animals to develop strong bones, teeth, and sheets. Meanwhile, although uh, temporary water or soft water has insipid taste, hard water has a more improved taste. But the bad part of hard water is fury of ghetto, wastage of soap, uh, forming stalagmite or stalacites in caves. Hard waters are not suitable for dyeing because the ions will interfere with the dye. So that is the bad part of hard water. Ladies and gentlemen, water, this brings us to the end of this class. Let's take a look at three or four questions from the flash learner down. The chemical used for coagulation in water purification is dash. For coagulation, we use aluminium tetraozosulfate cis, which is alum, like I stated earlier. So, option A is the correct option. And calcium tetraozosulfate cis dissolves in water only sparingly to form precipitate. Water has the ability to dissolve almost all substances because each molecule has a structure with one positive and one negative end. That is to say, water is polar. And here it says, coffee can best be removed by addition of solution of borax in water. A solution of borax in water is used to remove coffee stain. And kerosene is commonly used to remove the red color stain of palm oil 
from clothes because it makes the oil to evaporate easily by dissolving it. And a suitable solvent for iodine and naphthalene is ethanol. I deliberately drafted out these ones because you may not be able to answer them based on what we've done so far. But for other questions, about 60 70 other questions under water in the Flash Nina Dam app, your knowledge or the knowledge you've derived so far is enough for you to answer those questions. So get your Flash Learner Jump app right now using the YouTube description link or visit flashlearners.com or search Flash Learner Jump on Play Store. Get installed the app. When it loads, click on Practice for UTME, go to Chemistry, under Chemistry, choose Topic, Water. You will see all the questions Jump has ever said under Water. So if you are choosing here, choose Random here. So that questions will pop up from different years in jam. Ladies and gentlemen, to whom much is given should not run away with it. See you in the next episode where we shall be introducing solutions and solubility. <laughs>